Hello, this is section 1A. The topic of this section is common sets of numbers and set notation. So the goal of this section is basically just to orient ourselves and build a common foundation, uh, you know, learning the language of mathematics, including set notation, set builder notation, and specifically there are four very common sets of numbers I want us all to be aware of as we move forward in this unit. So the first of those sets of numbers is written as a capital Z, or you can say bold-faced Z, and that is concise notation for the set of all integers. Now an integer is just synonymous with a whole number, okay? So Z, capital Z stands for the set of all integers. Now, how big is that set? Well, that's an infinite set. There's an infinite number of integers. In fact, it's a doubly infinite array of numbers. So I'm going to write another description of that set, the set of all integers, in what's called set notation. So for set notation, you start with a curly brace, okay? So a left curly brace. And then at the end of this definition, I have a right curly brace over here. And in between, I'm going to fill in all the sort of or concise description of all the elements of that set separated by commas. Let me show you how this works. So we have a dot, dot, dot. We'll talk about what that means. And let's just say negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. I'm going to append this with a right curly brace. Okay, so there is set notation for the set of all integers. What I've done is I've separated the elements or sometimes called the members of the set of all integers by commas. And on the end here, I've sort of bookended this description with what's called an ellipsis. So the dot, dot, dot just means we continue on forever in both directions. So to positive infinity, to the right and to the left uh, with respect to negative infinity. So that's what I meant by it being a doubly infinite array. Okay, now I can describe this set. I'm gonna draw something called a Venn diagram here, okay? So let's just say I have this framework, okay? So I have a universe of sets. So U just stands for universe. This is an example of a Venn diagram. Within that universe, I have this set. It's a big set for sure, the set of all integers, okay? So I'll just label that as kind of a bubble and just to slap on the Z there just to indicate that's a set of all integers. Now the question I want to sort of pose is, are there numbers outside of that set that we can imagine? And the answer is, of course, yes. I mean, there are lots of numbers we're probably well familiar with that aren't contained in the set of all integers. I mean, one such example would be like the number one half, right? One half would be floating out here somewhere. I'm just going to use a sort of dot to indicate just so we can sort of settle it down. But let's say one half is out there. Certainly it's outside of the set of all integers. So on the heels of that, let's introduce a little bit more notation. So there's set notation. Now we'd like to, when we talk about sets, be able to coherently describe it's called the uh, membership in that set. So for instance, here's the notation as it works. Let's say the number four, right? The number four, that's a whole number, that's an integer. So I can write this notation. So I would read this as follows. This symbol, if you're not familiar, is epsilon. And epsilon here, with relation to sets, just means is an element of. You can read that as four is an element of the integers, or you can say four is contained within the integers. So yeah, sure enough, four is in the integers. That's in the bubble somewhere in my Venn diagram, it's called. Uh, but one half is not in there. So that's how we denote membership in a set. Four is an element of, we use the little epsilon symbol. I could similar, similarly write zero is an element of the integers, or eight is an element of the integers, and so on. How can I show something's not an element of it using this membership notation? Well, for instance, we just observed right casually one half is not an element of, so I'm just going to say epsilon with a slash through it is the typical way to notate this, and one half is not an element of or a member of the integers. In fact, we can see almost really any fraction is not going to be contained in the integers, so there's a lot more out there to sort of discover. That leads us to our next kind of natural set of numbers. Think of Q as standing for quotient, okay? So capital Q is again a concise notation standing for what's usually referred to as the set of all rational numbers. Okay, What's a rational number? By definition a rational number, just think ratio, is a fraction. Set of all rational numbers is a set of all fractions. We can write all the elements in that set in the following fashion. 
I can say Q consists of all the elements that look like this A divided by B, and this vertical line in set builder notation is read such that, so the set of all things that look like this, defining membership here, this criterion. A and B are integers, and to be totally thorough, we can't divide by zero, can't have zero in the denominator, so we also have to specify that B cannot be zero. So there you have it. One more comment on the integers and the rational numbers is they have a nice relationship, if you think about this, right? The integers are entirely contained inside of the rationals. Another way to put that is the integers are a proper subset of the rationals. And the way that's written in set notation is that you would say the integers are contained inside of the rational. So this notation is what's called a subset, or you can think of containment. So again, we would just say Z is a subset, it's contained within the rationals. How do I illustrate that with a Venn diagram? Well, I just draw another bigger bubble that entirely contains Z. Also, it's going to contain this fraction one half for sure. And there, that outer bubble is my Q. So Z is entirely contained within it. If it helps you sort of connect these things, of course, we all know, right, for instance, in terms of numbers, right, one is less than two. We're used to this kind of relation symbol. Well, similarly for sets, we can talk about kind of one set in a sense being less than another. So this relation just means this set, Z, is contained or smaller in a way, is contained inside of Q. Okay, so what we're going to do is build up a full sequence of the most common sets of numbers you'll ever encounter in any applied science field, beginning with Z and Q as kind of our basis.